Um, so I'm Kopa Nomaka Mabaso. I'm a mom, I'm a doctor, I'm a writer. Um, I care deeply about South Africa. I'm a proud South African. Um, yeah, and I'm an optimist um, and a proud African, I guess, to be growing up in a challenging time, but a time of great opportunity as well. What is, be, what is the most rewarding thing about being a public servant? <laughs> That's such a difficult question right now. Um, I think the most rewarding thing I mean about me personally is that when things work well, you really can make a huge difference. Um, and I think many people go into medicine want to make a difference. Um, a lot of, a lo you know, at the bedside, that's where it all comes together, right? The vulnerability, the, the crime, the heartache, the joys, the hopes, they all come together at the bedside. And as doctors, I think we're quite privileged to be able to be witnesses of the birth and the death and everything in between. And I think you have moments where you interact with real South Africans and beautiful stories and um, you can really make a difference. I think that's very rewarding. I think what's not rewarding sometimes is just um, how broken our health system is and, and how often we can't do as much as we'd like to do because of the rot across you know, levels of care. Um, I think she's an honest one. I think Mastrava, um is a, you know, a person who is trying to function in a very broken system and as a result struggles. I think often when things break down in the system we forget that it's people that are delivering the service and that the system also fails the people in the, in the service. Um, so I think she's an honest public servant. I think honest in the sense that she's honest about the challenges. Um, so was the rhythm of the book intentional? I'm, I mean it was also written over, I mean I write in quite uh, I don't know, fractured way. I don't kind of sit down and have periods of writing. I, I have bits of pieces of ideas that come together, voice notes. And so I'd say, I guess different parts were happening at different times in my own life and were a reflection, I guess, of my own sort of emotional state at the time. And I suppose sometimes when you're so close to something, you don't even see the staccato that you saw in it. I mean, I think because I'm so close to it, I don't see it. But when you said it, I thought, yeah, I guess you are right. And I don't know, I mean, I always think there's something slightly spiritual about writing, that you kind of are co-creating something, and sometimes you can't account for everything that's in there, and you just kind of go with what the readers say, yes, I did that on purpose, even though you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how did I navigate the emotional turbulence? I must say, I think, um, what is that saying? I think there's a saying that says, I don't know what I think until I write, or something to that effect, and I think, Myself having been a healthcare worker, or am a healthcare worker, and having gone through the health system as a junior doctor, I myself was struggling with kind of the challenges of the health system. And so writing it helped me to make sense of that. Um, and I mean, I must say, I think I find writing, writing is a very healing thing to do. I, I am able to better understand my own positionality and reflect on, on things a lot better. Um, so it was a hard book to write, I must say, I think it's probably the hardest uh, book I've written ever. Um, but it was always also just very rewarding as well and very fulfilling and, um, and it's been great to see the response. I mean, I think you never know, you kind of write something and keep your fingers crossed, but I've been really touched by how many people have been moved by it. Um, so that's quite encouraging. So, but I think, you know, like you say, it's something, rape is something that is, I mean, I don't think, I think in almost, I would assume, and I might be wrong, but most South African women know someone if they haven't been um, raped themselves, either as a child or, you know, and, and even as a medical doctor, I mean, I had worked in a, um, a unit where we saw many patients, and it's something that, it's kind of like, oh, well, this is just part of the South African story, and actually, it's, it sh we should be disgusted and appalled, and we should be calling it out, and and so it was difficult, but I also just felt a great sense of responsibility. And I mean, I think, particularly now, there's been a huge spotlight, which is great. But I think we all have, you know, when you walk alone, there's just so much, so much freedom that we that's been taken away from us as women because we live in such a violent society. And and I think, it, I mean, it needs to stop. And I think we need to be speaking loudly about why it needs to stop and why it's important. Um, yeah, so no, it wasn't easy at all, but um, 
I think, again, it's gratifying to see many people kind of connect with that and be equally as a core and wanting to speak about it. Yeah, so our initiative in the DRC, um, how did that happen? I mean, my friend and I, a very good friend of mine, both South African medical doctors were at Oxford studying. And I think we recognize that often we are problematized as a continent. We are always often the recipients of aid and seldom part of the solution or the decision-making tables. And we felt that we wanted to be part of the solution and um, we both care deeply about maternal health and health equity. And so we sort of are doing this initiative in the DRC. We are very fortunate to have one seed funding to um, sort of pilot the initiative and our pilot was a great success. Unfortunately, finding funding to kind of sustain it at scale has been a challenge. So we're right now kind of looking at, well, what do we do without the backing of major funders and are there ways for us to keep the initiative going out of our own pockets with kind of friends and people who care um, and the community itself. Um, so it's definitely been challenging, but I think definitely a transformative um, experience and a journey for us um, as Africans ourselves. It's called Onam Totowako, which means see your baby in Kiswahili. And um, the initiative is trying to address the unjust and very high and preventable levels of maternal death in these parts of the world. So many of these women live in rural areas, can't access healthcare during pregnancy. Um, and so many women die in childbirth and child outcomes are quite poor. So we take Till today. Till today, yeah. I mean, I think statistically falling pregnant is probably the most dangerous thing you can do as a rural Congolese woman compared to everything else that can happen to you. Um, and this is not just Congo, this is happening across the continent. Um, so our initiative takes antenatal health care to these women. So we have a mobile ultrasound scan machine that um, that kind of is the carrot that attracts women to come see their baby, hence the name. And at that interaction, they then offered screening for high blood pressure, anemia, and various other conditions in pregnancy. Um, so, so, I mean, we had an overwhelming response to the pilot, but it is an expensive program to run. And so we've had to put it on ice until we're able to secure bigger funding. Yeah. What is my idea of service to country and humankind? Um, sure, that's a tough one. I mean, I think, I think, you know, it shouldn't be a burden. I think if we're going to do things in a sustainable way, I think we should do what we love. But I think we should try and, particularly because we come from a country, particularly with great social inequality, that we should try to, whatever it is we do, inspire to try and close the gap and to try work with integrity. I think integrity is something that's in quite short supply right now in South Africa. And um, if everyone in their own corner could be working with integrity, I think that would serve our country and our continent in a huge way. But I think service is quite broad, and I mm -hmm. think service doesn't necessarily have to be a sort of martyristic type of service. You can serve by, by inspiring, you know, when you are in your A game and you are slaying in your own field, that is service, because other people look at you and they say, hey, if Kauhalo can do it, I can also do it. So I think service shouldn't be kind of a set of chains, but really to find your truth and to live it, I think is service.